jumping in for the first round here. On Oasis, we'll see how these guys are going to do at the moment. Looks like maybe we'll have Climax on that Widowmaker still. Looks that way. We saw a mostly uh, in these battlegrounds from him, uh, you know, all three parts of Oasis, the McCree more than the Widow, he was going to be playing hit scan. Ibo will be on the far duty. Sasha, ironically, will be playing the Genji, not the far that he's known for. Well, Ace in the back trying to get rid of Violet, but he'll get taken down. The Zenyatta coming up with the kill. Jim Mack will also fall, so this should actually be a pretty swift lock in for the side of O2 already, and as the point gets ready to unlock. Now gets that counter kill. Oporochi sticks with the Lucio pick, by the way. It's old school runaway dive for the Tracer Genji Lucio Zenyatta here as it comes through. That's going to be TD getting taken out there by Ivy. Finds the kill. The Baba going to go low, just zips his way back into the center where they have control over the point as Ivy just keeps poking out, trying to build up for that barrage. Not really getting any big hits in here. So They'll have to make a switch. At 40%. Yeah, they make the switch here to the uh, Widowmaker to help deal with Ivy. Sashin's going to play Tracer, and Oporochi is going to help boost the Widow. Unfortunately, already taken out here because the Faris got such a good angle, and they were unable to get the Widowmaker into range. He cannot be hit by Widow here because Widow has to get into position, which means that the Widow has to come through this choke point in order to get to where Ivy is. So Ivy is basically just getting free pot shots, building free ult charge here, already at 55%. The Foxes need to do something quick here because they've already lost ult charge by switching, and it's going to get worse and worse from here. Yakult playing forward, jumps into the back, has that primal range ready to go, doesn't have to pop it yet, and just to stay alive and just. Zaps down some of the members of the Foxes, dissuading them from pushing forward in on the point. Really surprising that we're not seeing Sasin of all people swap over onto the Farah to try to match Farah for Farah. Jung Mac gonna go low in onto the point. Get healed back up, approaching that primal range. Ivy's got a great angle, Mirage gonna be ready to go, drops onto the ground, doesn't have to use it because Ace and MCD are just gonna both get taken out. Now he's got this back angle in onto the tanks, still holding the ultimate, knows his limits, knows that he does not need to use it. And Sasa and Oberochi start playing in traffic. This may just simply be the beginning of the end now for the Foxes because they don't have any way to get in here. Again, the point of the Farah composition here is that Ivy is untouchable. You cannot hit him at this angle with the Widow. It looks like you could if you could just sneak around to the left side here, but you cannot. So Ivy just kind of sneaks around here, around these line of sight blockers that are these barriers, these archways. So he's able to do free damage. By the time they come through, the tanks are already low, and that's where they're going to dive in. Getting prepped for maybe a Mirage here, comes up over the top as Jakku Fox drops that. Pops that primal range where it's going to be difficult sometimes. Bubble down in onto the point as the Fox is trying to take this one. About to be into overtime, and Ace is just going to get taken down. Rocket to the face. He will fall. Mirage in, looking for Stan, but he's got that defense matrix trying to keep himself alive. Healing coming through. Ivy barely going to stay alive. Bounces back up, points that self destruct. Now drops it. Looks for Oparochi in the middle of the res. Manages to take him down and get Stan to follow up. Not going to allow him back in the back. And this is looking like 100 0 here for O2. Very, we're very one sided first map of Oasis. The soldier switch here for Ace is not going to be enough. He wants to rush back in. But it's the Farah control, and you ask the question, you know, it's a, or you, you beg the question here basically, why not see Sashin on his iconic Farah? And it's a question that we don't have the answer to. The, the best way to deal with a Farah oftentimes on other maps is to play your own, own Farah so you can also threaten their DPS, threaten their tanks at an angle where it makes the tanks struggle to position themselves correctly. But he stayed with the Tracer for a very long time there. And even if he made the switch to the Farah, he'd have the same struggles, right? Trying to get around where the Farah has line of sight advantage and is able to do free damage. But the fact that he didn't start with it gave them a disadvantage and Ivy just dominated. And that's why Farah is so meta right now. You just get into the blind spot of the Widow, and it becomes very difficult. Now we're going to see this Protect the McCree composition with a new twist of the uh, Farah, right? Instead of running you know, a Sombra, which was more common in the past, or just another Tracer. So very, very technical composition for O2 already. If McCree dies, the comp falls apart. Fox is on under heavy fire, stand. Go dangerously low there on that Zarya. Getting killed back up, just back as well, falling. Ace comes into the side, helps take them. Yakpunk, they managed to find the kill. This going to be a trade on the Reinhardts, but now no tanks available for the side of O2, so Fox is looking to get this initial cap. And the Storm be Arrow. Relatively easy for them to do so. The Storm Arrow just helps you burst down tanks so easily. Not only that, but Ivy, because he is getting tagged up like hell. Ace is trying to snipe him out of the sky, can't do it. Has to peel back as he goes low. Really good trades, though, because they're building more support ult while he stays alive. But that whole time, they weren't able to get the cap, so actually, O2 could just push back in and still look for this initial one. Deadeye going to be available for Climax, and O2 do lock in the point. Yep, he's got the Deadeye here as well, and plenty of protection to use it at whatever angle he wills it. 
As Sashin is on the far this time, but it's going to be tough. You're going to be away from the shield. You're always going to have to know that there is that potential. You get knocked out by the Dede or just left clicks alone on this McCree. Charge going through, but Yakpung really overstepping. Will get taken down. Mirage coming through from Ivy gets rid of the Reinhardt yet again. There's going to be a trade on those. It's going to be an answering transcendence out from MCD. Trying to keep them alive in the fight, but body shot going through in on Assassin, and he'll get taken down. Climax with the easy tag. Takes him right out of the sky. 30% going upward here. O2 looking firm on this defense. Ivy played no games of Farah in season one. This was not a hero pick for him. This was not common. This was not meta, but already he's shown he's prepared for this new meta where Farah is so important, especially on control. And he's just winning out against the more well known Farah, Sashin. Stan One's got this grab. They're going to try to use this to open up the push, but Ace is already dead, so the combo can't work. Yeah, not going to be having it. The Dead Eye coming down will get rid of Stan. But Took Mac rather is going to be able to answer that one onto the McCree, but the res it's was still going to be Fox is losing heavily here as O2 already and just maintains control. Res in on the climax like it never even happened. Yeah, they got the res on the ace to try to force the combo with the grab surge, but it was just too desynced. By the time that he was res and able to toss out the dragon strike, the grab surge was already over. So. The idea was there, but it was a really, really quick pick by O2R, and it really destroying what they were trying to set up there with that combination. So looking really bad now for the Foxes. Oh, and Ivy just find another hit there. That's going to be the Graviton Surge coming down. Nothing that they can do. Everybody's just going to be locked in. The Foxes dropping like flies. As Ivy has just been ripping them to shreds. The guy is a monster on this bar right now. I mean, talking about Protect the McCree comp, it's really all about Ivy. Climax is picking up some of these follow-up kills, but the damage is being presented by Ivy. He's the one knocking down the health bars on the side of the boxes. Yeah. You'll see they'll try that match here as Ace swaps over to the, to the McCree, but I think the damage is already done. They have to get onto the point. It's 98%. Got to be careful about the shatter. Really need to make sure they're to go. Position. MCD got to get taken down. Climax. Rips him apart, Mirage is coming through. Then it's just a fine one, but he'll get taken down, but it's still gonna be three members dead on the side of the Foxes. Valkyrie coming through, Sasa with a Mirage, but he's not even gonna get the chance to use it. Climax takes him out of the sky, gets rid of the Mercy, completely dismantling them, and that's gonna be the tick down. 200-0 wins for the side of O2 Climax. here on Oasis. Climax played so much McCree on this map in Season 1. He's you know, called by many the best hit scan in Korea for a reason. His McCree is phenomenal, and when you Look at what the meta is in other regions. Oftentimes, it's just the Widow Farah. But what the McCree offers you is the potential for Deadeye. But more than that, you have the ability to burst down tanks. Sure, the Widow can do that too. And that's why Widow's used with the Farah. The Farah gets in an angle where the tanks can't shield. You chip them down, force them to reposition, and then the Widow snipes them and kills them. But what McCree gives you is the ability to not only burst down tanks and be a little bit more mobile, but you can also deal with the Farah a lot easier. We saw actually them work together. The Farah, you know, taking shots from the, uh, from the far out there coming in from Ivy. So Ivy chunks down Sashin and then McCree just changes angles and helps finish off the Farah. It's a little bit tougher for Widow to be able to switch targets that easily because of how her aim works, how her zoom works, right? So the Hanzo pick is good for bursting down tanks, but when you're losing your DPSs so consistently to the McCree and obviously Ivy, Ivy's Farah that just totally gate kept them on the first point, and then as we went to university, things got even worse. You end up with a one sided match, and this map plays so well into O2 Ardian's playstyle that they get this massive, massive free win, it feels like almost. I mean, it was much more one-sided than any of the games we just saw in our previous series, to be totally frank. I mean, with the exception of Junker Town. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah that's, that's very true. You can see, though, some of the members of X6 sticking around to watch the games. But I was about to drink some water, but no, we're on camera. Not allowed. Shout out to uh, Stay Hydrated Bot in the chat. But, uh, yeah. man, what a really swift oasis there. Thinking that this was going to be the more competitive series, but uh, O2 kind of turning that expectation on its head with a very dominant performance over the Foxes. Like I said last time out, Foxes able to take Oasis. This time O2 take it so very convincingly. We'll see if they can maintain that momentum as we get ready to move into hybrid. I mean, O2 is still the same core roster, right? And it's a terrifying yeah. one with Climax, you know, in the in the gunner seat basically. Ivy's playing a new hero but he's playing it exceptionally well, not showing any nerves in this first match. We saw a lot of inconsistencies through regular season off of this player. But oftentimes, even though it was supposed to be a Genji Junkrat map, he wasn't even played because they knew that he would choke in a lot of those moments. He starts off phenomenally, and I think that we're still finding the footing right now for the Foxes. They can't rely on Oparochi's fantastic Genji and the dive, uh, or Adora Oparochi, like that duo, right, of you know, building the Dragon Blades with the Mercy boost, which Adora and Oparochi were the first players in Korea to actually use that type of strategy to have the Mercy on the Genji. It was mostly, uh, we were seeing more Ana and even Lucio for that uh, in the beginning of the season. So they kind of 
push that meta forward. Adora's gone now. They don't have the great Genji player. It's not a meta for that. So not only do the Foxes bring in some rookie DPSs here, but there's a lot of new things to kind of understand in this meta. I like the idea to try to break the tanks with the Storm Arrow, yeah. but it's it's limited in range, whereas the McCree can, in this on this map specifically, where you're brawling in one area, help fight tanks when the Discords or orbs there to break them down, fight the Pharah, and just has range capabilities that Hanzo simply does not have. Yeah, I mean, it was rough. It was it was a bit, a bit too late on the, the attempt to match them there with the McCree coming through, but even then, Ivy was just absolutely destroying people left and right there with this, uh, with that Pharah coming through on Oasis, and I'm looking forward to seeing more of that as we progress through the series to mostly see if Foxes can, can come up with an answer because the Widowmaker not working out, the McCree not working out. Those are usually your go-tos. What do you do next, Soldier? Because we already yeah. saw that once today. It didn't do well. I mean, this is the map where you, you really have to stick with a comp and make it work or you lose ult advantage. And if you lose the point and you have to switch, like you're always going to be behind and ults the entire time. I'm going to do a little bit more uh, cheerful contest shots for you guys here. The big Just fan. We'll see if he gets subbed in a little bit later on, showing his hero pool here. Most famous for his Widow, but has the Dragon Strike sneaking in from behind. That's a <laughs> great Hanzo drawing, or maybe it's a drawing of crumbs. I can't tell. Widow's just hanging out. We'll go back over to the East. The Tracer and the Soldier, both great. But the, the full roster coming through. As uh, your head's right here as well. It's looked beautiful. Oh, don't oh. block his head. <laughs> Here's the Hammond. Uh, Fox is Hammond, waiting for that to come out. Probably not going to be available until playoffs or later here in Contenders, but hey, maybe one day. Yeah, maybe maybe even Season 3. Not sure if we'll have that one for playoffs. We have to wait for Daddy Blizzard to let us know when that one's going to go. MCD fan here. Hasn't had the greatest start, but I mean, it's rough when you take a loss like that. Does the cute me has arrived, basically. It's like, I'm here and I'm cute, is basically what that's. <laughs> The sign gets re-shown here. You can I see the dragon I, I, strike gets to the bottom and the top of the sign. I just noticed the Widowmaker just kind of poking out in the back. Yeah. It's like a part of the dragon's just body, but it's actually her face. She's uh, been pretty stealthy, but already we're going to have a swap coming through on the side of the boxes. Just is going to come in, and Ace is going to be out. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what ends up happening in terms of swaps on heroes here, because this is not a swap that I think is occurring due to um, underperformance of Ace. It's more of probably a hero pool switch, which we don't know that much about just yet. Um, I do know that his main heroes are the Widow, the Hanzo, and the Genji. Um, he's best at Widowmaker, so that's something that uh, will come into big effect, obviously, as we move into hybrid. Uh, but he's a very inexperienced player, obviously, straight up a rookie right from the ladder. Uh, yeah. You know, he was recruited through tryouts and his performances in solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> That, you know, points for trying on this one. It's better than I could do, that's for sure. It's, uh, you know. It kind of looks like him a little bit. It is a drawing. It has two eyes and nose and a mouth, so does Just. So, I mean, you, you know. know. Just, he's, <laughs> Just is that player with a face and the hair. Two seems, ears. Seems about right. He's got a neck. He's got a torso. <laughs> you can't see the ears, so I cannot confirm <laughs> that it. Just, in fact, has ears. But, like, I would assume so because he's wearing a headset, right? So, it's got to be for something. Yeah, you know. Shout out, to the, shout out to the Wicked shirt there as well. Pulling the ears. We're all about ears here. Pull at the ears, maybe? I, I'm not sure. It says pull at Wicked something. Delicious? Inscrupulous? Inscrupulous? I have no idea. Pulling someone's ears would be pretty inscrupulous, I would say. Well, we have the sub coming through. It looks like everyone's <laughs> ready here for map two. Yeah, should be ready to get back into this one. We'll see what the Foxes have selected. Last time out, it was uh, O2 making the map selection for the second. But it's going to be back to Nambani yet again for the second time today. Well, this is a map where we could definitely see a lot of the far return for Ivy, but it's a great map for Genji as well. So this may be why we see Just subbed in, because he will likely be the Genji player over Ace, who's purely hit scan from the information I've been giving. And, you know, obviously looking up his battle net account and stuff like that, he's a hit scan main. So Just probably going to be playing some Genji here. We'll see the very likely Brigida swaps as we head into the streets phase. But this is the map that Fox has made their name on. This is the map where Adora pushed with the Dragon Blade that was boosted by the Mercy. So Oparochi got a faster Dragon Blade than any other Genji was getting on this map to get in there and kill the supports before they had their support, or support ultimates. That was the Fox's trademark strategy on this map. So they bring us back here, but Adora's not on the roster. 
We'll see if Just can fill the role. But they're dealing with Ivy, who yeah. got, is a good enough Genji to get them to the grand finals when he was on point in playoffs. A very tall order here for the side of the Foxes to get, ready and get rid of and dismantle that Farrah composition. We'll see if they can do it. Showing the Doom Fist, don't think this is going to be sticking through, but hey, it's the most efficient way to break the walls, you know? He's got to kill those walls real quick. He's yeah. like, Doom Fist is the fastest way. Just knock him down, he can just go ahead and charge right through, but it's actually going to be the Junkrat here on defense. So, very much the standard defense we saw from this squad. Where's my Torbjord? Okay. <laughs> Occasionally, we'd see Climax on the Soldier, as you mentioned uh, earlier, but it, this is the more standard way to play it, especially today in this meta. And just will be on the Genji as predicted. Sashin on the far, so the far Genji attack, very common right now. It's gonna be up to Oparochi to, again, have similar performances here to allow Just to get that quick blade to kill the supports, break through. It's tough to have that faster than a rip tire though, you know, and that's why yeah. the Junkrat became so meta and can help you peel in the back line. Well, mine's gonna be deleted there. Ivy not gonna be finding much poke as far as that's concerned, but you see the tag in from Climax, just hitting up Sassen. We'll have to get healed back up. Dive in, coming through, but Jesse goes straight into the trap, but he's still going to be alive. Never mind, that's going to be up. the remote mine coming out. Central Charge just takes him down. Ivy getting part of the first kill here so far of Navani. In onto the point, still going to be contested at the moment, but they move off of this. That's going to be the first hit coming through from the side of the boxes as they get rid of Climax and get rid of Violet. Sassen here starting to show up with this Farah, his trademark pick. Still firing away, finds the tags in onto Rain, and looks like O2 Ardian just gonna have to lose this point. Five and a half minutes on the clock for the Foxes. A very effective push despite losing just off the bat. The, the Farah pick here for Sashin works so well because Junkrat's good at dealing with Tracer Genji specifically, very good at dealing with Dai, but when you have this extra angle where Orisa's barrier isn't gonna protect you, Sashin finds the flank. If the Widow, Climax in this case, can't get line of sight, you have a fantastic way to just demolish everyone. The Junkrat can't take the Farah out of the sky, so you just end up losing out. So they end up winning compositionally here. The hits are good for Sashin, and as you say, the five and a half minute time bank is a great one. Climax trying to pick out some angles here to get some shots in on Sashin and take him down, but see, the predictions coming through the Rockets just hitting him at every single turn. CD gonna go down as Yakum jumps forward, has that transcendence, this one hasn't popped yet. So we'll just go ahead and hold on to it. Sashin answers the barrage, gets rid of the enemy Winston. Foxes keep trying to push forward. Jim Mac in the meantime, popping that primal rage. Trying to dive deep, but gets chunked out. Goes back in. Yeah, it's tough, you know, when you only have the Widowmaker to deal with Farah, and this is the meta, right? So you have Farah Widow all the time, so Farah's know how to play around those lines of sight. Oh, Ivy coming in the back, looking for Jung Mac. He's able to burn him down with the help of Baba, so they find that kill. Now Sasan in a bit of an awkward position. Ivy coming down. Pulse bomb ready to go, but not gonna throw it out yet. Sasen, he is completely disconnected, will get taken down, no TPS available, so O2 can push forward and regain control over this cart and try to stop, start draining down the clock. You know, it's mostly a, an element of, you know, you weaken them with the Farah, you dive in to try to get the kills. This time it didn't work. We're going to see Sashin switch over to the Tracer now. Obviously, Farah loses utility over time on this map as you get into the street phase, because there's more open area here more easily. You can see where Climax is positioned right there, straight in the middle of the map. It's hard to kind of avoid that as far as you have to go into this very wide street phase. Ivy going in, looking for the finish here onto the supports. Not going to find it yet, but it looks like they've lost track of him. He's still going to be pushing into the back. Pulse Bomb still not used. Dragon Blade going to help take down that pilot form diva, but otherwise not finding a yeah. whole lot. But they can still start pushing this card forward yet again. Not a very efficient Dragon Blade by any means, but it's not going to be here for the contest, unfortunately. That's yeah. where they really wanted it. Onto the card, nearly finding that one clip there on MC Deep. Not going to go down yet. The pocket from Oparochi comes through to keep him alive. In the meantime, Violet's going to go ahead, toss out that transcendence to keep everybody into the fight. See, back onto the card and try to stop this from rolling into B. Dangerously close, just two and a half meters away as Ivy continues to threaten the support cell. Dive in with Yakpo here in the primal range, trying to rip them apart. The stick comes down, finds one. Oparochi also going to get taken out, and Ivy follows up for a kill in onto Sasa, but gets cut down by Just. Seems like the damage is going to be done. O2 Guardian should be able to maintain control, but maybe the self destruct can turn things around as rain goes down. Yakpunk still in. He'll go low. Primal Rage out from Jungmak as they try to get the completion. Baba still tagging in, but he is all on his lonesome. He'll get taken out of the mech, and it's just a matter of time here for the Foxes to go ahead and roll through. Four minutes, 11 seconds now, as they approach the finish here on Nimbani. Yeah, really well played by the Foxes. The sustain there 
uh, was really good. And I MCD stayed alive for so long when that dive came through for Ivy, so that actually bought them a lot of time to regroup. You had to take the pulse bomb to finish them off. Yeah, I mean, really good positioning on this Zenyatta, so that's a big story. And Just is able to, in that longer fight, build a Dragon Blade. They have the Transcendence available soon. So right now for O2, it's a little bit scary here on the defense. They don't have great ways to deal with the Dragon Blade. The Forest Switch makes a lot of sense. Knowing that Dragon Blade is available, you can kind of completely avoid it. Diamond coming through, that's going to be the Dragon out. Played out from just, but from the side, Violet takes him down. They still manage to get Climax in the end, but they lose out on Oparochi at the same time. Transcendence in from MCD, trying to stay alive. The Reds comes out from Rain, bringing Climax back into the fray. Ivy poking out. Unfortunate usage of ultimates here. You know, they, they didn't ha have the Transcendence before the Dragon Blade came out, so he got cut down. He's going to make the switch to Widow here for the final push, but they use the Transcendence as well on top of that after the lost fight. So a little bit of disconnect here for the Oh, boxes. he takes... He gets rid of the scope just at the last second there as Climax beats the corner, takes him down. Remember, Just is also not the main hit scam player for this roster, so now he's kind of playing an off role here because it makes more sense for the composition, but it's not his best hero. So it becomes a little bit awkward here when you're placing off against, you know, what has been called the best hit scan in Korea, well, Climax. Pulse in. Climax in a really odd spot up near the cart. Will can take it down. Assassin finds the kill. Red's going to come through, but Rain loses his life for that one, and Climax is just going to die up right off the bat yet again as Just Starts popping off on the Widowmaker. Follows up with the kill in onto Ivy Humbaba out of the mech. Will get taken down as does Jacques right as the Primal Rage becomes available. Goes around the corner, finds Violet. Very well and played. And now Vox is going to have a wonderful push as they round this final corner. Really good communication after the pick came in from Sasha. And they knew Climax was dead, so they had full range of mobility here. No threat of the Widow. So that was really well coordinated. The second that pick came through, they all got right where they needed to be. Just has the high ground now, which is so difficult to fight against. They're going to dive him deep, but he's able to trade so well here. Yeah, that's going to be the Discord Orb in on a Yakpung as he gets chunked out, looking for the shot in on the rain, but he dashes away to keep himself safe. In the meantime, Climax goes ahead and gets rid of Jung Mac. Transcendence is in onto the point. MCD using his pulse bump going wide from Sasan, not finding the pickoff. Managing to stay alive though as Just wins another battle. One for one on these Diva Bombs as Humbaba will fall and Just goes down. Climax back in off the res. Fox is held at bay 3.8 meters away from the completion. O2 already and even at everything that they've got to try to hold them off and stop this completion from coming through. Really, really forcing this fight here. They've got really good sustain as well, with the healer still alive in the bag. Ivy needs to make something happen. He's almost one clips Jungmak there with the remaining health he had. They pushed them off. They're still charging forward, though. Trying to get those finishing blows in to get the stagger. Not able to do so, so Jungmak and Stan will be able to stay alive. And that's going to be a lot of healing, or a lot of charge over to yeah. MCD here with this Transcendence. He should be able to have it very soon for one final push. The key here is that Just lost his positional advantage. So even though the Foxes didn't get staggered, you can oh. see it's tough for him to find an angle here. When he gets around this point, of course, to the right side, that's where he has to face off straight up against Climax. But there's no way for him to sneak an angle. The Sashin switching over to the Brigida makes it easier for them to push forward, but it's still going to be that line of sight issue that they have. As he just struggles to get on the high ground. Ivy is guarding it with his life right now. Now looking for the pulse in the back. Yeah, not only that, but also going to be the damage. A bit of a worry here for the box as the Sassen can pull off some crucial stunts. Pulse bomb in. Going to go wide. Ivy not finding the pick off there. Onto MCT. Not going to be able to force out that transcendence. Oporochi goes to the skies with the Valkyrie as Mbaba occupies the high ground. Builds up. Gets that self destruct ready to go as Yakupong uses the primal rage, but. Uncertain if that's going to be the most necessary use of that ultimate. Justice in onto the flank. Looking for some pickoffs here, but he's going to get taken down. Violet from downtown takes his head off with the orbs. Now pushes in onto the cart with that transcendence to keep everybody else topped up. No res coming through yet for the Widowmaker as Jungmak goes low. Not going to get taken down, but it's 15 seconds remaining. The Foxes, they're going to have to regroup fast and charge their way back in onto the point. Yeah, this is looking really bad for them now. It felt like they were almost reliant on building up that armor, the rally, and then using it to push. Like you said, the damage was an issue. Pulse bomb in, but going to be devoured there by that defense matrix, so Ivy not going to be getting much done, but he still has a nice back flank in onto these tanks. Sand with the Discord Orb going to be hovering around half HP as we enter into overtime. Climax jumping away, keeps himself safe, finds that headshot in onto the Winston. He'll get top back up, he'll be fine. I'm pushing forward, trying to get rid of MCD. He's going dangerously low, but the shields are just regenerating on top of the armor. They can't break through it. They have him cornered finally, though, with the Primal Rage, but he's still going to be alive. Uh, Ivy is in trouble now. He gets the d on the stand. They need this for the overtime. Someone's got to get on that. Mbaba dead, Yakpung dangerously low, has the bubble there. Chung Mac gonna fall, the pulse bomb taking him down as Ivy starts working his way through the tank. Stan finished off, Climax finds a shot on the just Oparochi goes down. All the boxes just getting ripped apart by the members of O2 Ardian as they're just one and a half meters away from completion, but it looks like they might just fall short here at the finish line as Sasan goes down. The OT meter plummets 
and O2 already had barely hold off boxes from getting the third point. We're seeing such good play out of Rain. I mean, he's looking always in position, but Violet is the one who's getting these kills, right? Like, the supports on the side of O2 made that final push almost impossible. And do we get these, uh, you know, in Korean, right? It's something I review mostly, right, as the analyst here, but, uh, and it's in Korean as well, but we get these questionnaire sheets where almost every pro gamer, especially newer pro gamers, are asked, what's a player you think is terrifying? Like, so it just gives us a sense of who's everyone saying is scary, who's everyone saying is one of the best players uh, in this tournament right now. And the player whose name has come up the most is actually Violet. He's yeah. so good at hitting his transcendences when they need to be hit. He was the best counter transcendence to uh, EMP Zenyatta player last season, surviving so many times when he was dope upon. But today he's just killing Sashin on the tracer when he's in the, trying to kill him in the back line. He got the kill there onto Just with the right clicks when Just was trying to flank. He's just so spatially aware of everything that's happening, and it makes it so difficult to play against this uh, Zenyatta player. I mean, we've seen it out of the likes of players like Jonak, uh, you know, for New York Excelsior in the actual league itself, but here in Contenders as well. You can see the, the signs of a legendary Zenyatta player who's very much a fixture of this meta. So is Mercy. So the Zenyatta can not only make the defensive plays in healing, but also the aggressive plays when you're able to predict correctly where a Widow is going to poke their head out. Very well played. Uh, in those final moments there. See here, looks like maybe not going to be running a diva here for the side of the Foxes. Stand at the moment on the Brigida. Expecting Ivy to come out on the Genji. Very reasonable expectation to have. So you can basically try to shut that down, get the stuns, get the combo off, and then Ivy just falls apart. O2? This isn't real. I was, are I was you like, okay? <laughs> I was a little bit scared for a second. <laughs> well, the checking with Yakpung, you would assume here with the Sombra. Yeah, he He's still pushing forward. The yeah, there we go. Jumps back, as does the Doomfist. Can very quickly retreat. So just a good way of pushing forward. I like this. It's good to see new scouting techniques coming through. Yeah. As opposed to just the, Sc the Sonic, Sonic Arrow, Arrow of old that we're used to seeing. Well, you know, I thought they might decide to switch if after seeing the Brigida. They may not have seen it. Okay, they are going to switch now, so they've definitely seen it because it's so difficult to use the Genji specifically against the Brigida. Tracer, very difficult as well, but the Genji is so reliant on getting in the back line where the supports are, and yeah. when you just get right click stun, you're done. Oh, climax, thinking that Just was gonna poke his head out, does so, jumps in. After hearing that shot, now looking for the hits in onto Ivy's, that is, Wardorp comes through, but he'll go ahead and recall, gets tagged up yet again, has to dash out to safety. Nearly having that first tick, they'll finally start contesting this on the point, it's just has to leap away, keeps himself safe. Over onto the high ground though, just gonna get taken down. Yakon coming up the first kill. The horse stand back, nearly taking him out. The charge coming in, not gonna get the connection, but stand wraps in around the corner and might just be another early surrender onto point A. A really good positional advantage for Otorian once they have the high ground. Climax is able to take pot shots. They're gonna go for one more contest. Yeah, the jungle not gonna go down. And really no way for Oprochi to get in to try to get that res. He'll dash away. And O2 Ardian gonna be starting things off with six fewer seconds. Now, very similar. But, uh, yeah, as you say. Oh, oh Barochi, oh dear. Your That's Genji left you, and no one to dash to. Yeah. And now he might die as well. Yakpung, though, half HP. I'll have to go ahead and just says, hey, stop and by, check on you guys, see how you are. Well, O2 Ardian has ult advantage now. They don't have a big ult, the Dragon Blade, that Fox has had uh, on their attack. That was something that they could use to try to force this contest. Uh, it is going to be the solo push bio. They actually want to go deep here to use their ults to get a wipe, so maybe they can look for more ultimates before the contest. I actually like this play style here. It's not all in. Down. Ivy going in, finds a stick, and that's going to be MCD get taken out. Doesn't find any follow-up kills. Off the explosive damage is Oprah Ochi. Goes dangerously low, but seems like he got himself out to a safe spot. But the same cannot be said here for Jung Mac. Doesn't use the Primal Rage. The card's still going to be slowly brought up by Violet. Yakpung will go ahead and leap back. Dragon Blade coming through from Sasin. Maybe a bit of an overreach here, though. He's going to jump in for set the Transcendence. Otherwise, it's going to be an Air Blade. And now he has to try to get himself out the safety. Just Gord Orb in, getting zapped to death there by Yakpung. Will manage to stay alive, but big DPS ult going to be blown. Yeah, and it's it's used before Contest as well. So they don't really have great tools to stop this push from coming through. Now, Stan One's going to try to trade with Yakpung, but he's being pocketed right now. Very difficult to win this sustain war right now for the Foxes. Yeah, and MCD going to fall. Spray into the back here, Stan gonna get knocked out of the mech, goes ahead, forces out that self-destruct, but will not find anybody. Seems like, yeah, he's not gonna make it back into the mech. Ivy is just ripping them to shreds. 
finds Oparochi as well. Violet gets another kill of sauce and dies, and it's yeah. gonna be just about five minutes on the clock the, to get this final push. The damage just was more sustainable for O2. Does when he the, get this finish? No. When okay. the Dragon Blade's blown like that, your Genji just isn't as useful as a Tracer because Tracer can always do damage, whereas Genji's so limited as to what he can do. He can do burst with his combo. He can do some left click damage, but you're never going to have that same amount of damage that Ivy can put out here on the Tracer. So, oh. unfortunate. Okay, well, MCD finding. A he's nice doing his violent impression, you know. Yeah, he's trying to do his violent impression. He was doing his Jonak impression. He's doing his best in his new game here. Ivy going low, healed up as the Transcendence comes down from Violet. He's still going to be. 30% or so away from that one. Violet dashes back defensively as Jim Max here with this Reinhardt. But the shield not going to be in position to keep Stan alive and in the mech. He'll go down. Jim Max knows well about the fall, but MCD able to pop that transcendence in time to keep him alive. But they're still kiting back defensively. They can't play forward. Oh, and now both songs ready to go. Self the comes in, finds Sauce and takes him down. It's going to be the recall out from Ivy trying to stay alive. Finds the stick. MCD taken out as O2 Ardian looked to punch their ticket through. To a 2-0 start in this game, and with Jung Mac going down, looks like it's gonna happen. Stan trying to spray away, trying to get back into the mech. It's close, but no cigar. He will go down, and that will be it. 0-2 already in finding the completion here on Numbani. They move 2-0 up in this series. They started season one with a bit of a, a meme. So it was the 0-2 already, they were down 0-2 in many of their series. But they find themselves up 2-0 today in the rematch against Foxes that we saw in the same group last season. It's Ivy who's carrying in terms of DPS, but we saw a lot of disjointedness on that final point C defense coming out from the boxes, making the Brigida and Reinhardt switch to try to counter Ivy on the Tracer. It's very difficult to get in there as Tracer and not get stunned and get blown up because it's very easy to track a Tracer with the Reinhardt swings, for example. Unfortunately, though, he was just untouched. We had his first point of view for almost the entirety of that. He was never stunned. He was never dealt with. And they were just trying to rely on slow respawns coming through with the jump through with the uh, Reinhardt and the Brigida. So getting used to saying that word in casting. Uh, her name is very difficult. <laughs> anyway, running forward with those to try to contest the cart meant that Ivy was able to jump through the Reinhardt shield, get up behind them. And they're running it against a Widowmaker rather than against Tracer Genji. So it was a little bit tougher to actually find success with that hero switch. It was overall a decent idea, but the execution was rough. And they just got all completely run over by Ivy. I mean, he was yeah. just, we were watching his health, like his health was at like 142 for the entire time. He was like, I don't have to recall. I don't need heals. I'm just blowing everybody up right now. Yeah, ripping them, ripping them to shreds. Climax and Ivy just basically outclassing everybody on the side. Uh, the Fox is just looking good for a moment. He had those those pop-off moments with the Widowmaker coming through, but it wasn't enough to really get them over that finish line, get that third point completion. And even if they had, you can see right there, the time bank from the side of O2 Ardian was just so very dominant that they would have been uh, highly expected to win it, even if we had to go into overtime rounds. But uh, that's 2-0. So 